Well, college football is already underway with the Gophers' big win against Eastern Illinois last weekend. Plus, the first regular season Vikings game is on Sunday, and fantasy football oh. officially begins, which means 10 hours on the couch. Football season is my favorite. Well, why, while you're watching the games, you've got to have the grub, right? And Sorry. here with some slow cooker recipes for game day. The co owner, owner of Cafe 421, Antigone Sandra Hi. McLeod. Hi, darling. All right, nice Tig, to let's see do you. this. All right, we're You've doing got two it. crock pots, which is not six, but it's still two. No, I thought I had a lot having <laughs> two, but it's nothing compared Wait, to me. Just to be clear, you only own two. I do only own two. However, that's when we know it's a problem. I okay. am new to the crock potting sort of land of people. Yeah. I kind of resisted them for a very long oh, time. Man, it's a fast join growing us, community. Join us. It really we is. It. it was super popular oh. and then it fell out of popularity. Yeah. Now it is like when, way at the when top. When I leave in the morning and I have something in the crock oh, pot, don't you feel great? I brag about it all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. And you know that once you get home, that smell will oh, greet you at the door. Oh, oh it's totally. so good. Okay, so you've got an appetizer and a meal thing. This is what yes, I'm loving here. Totally. So we're going to work on the appetizer first. Okay. And those of you who have been to Cafe 421 have had our baked art artichoke and feta oh, cheese dip, which hello, is delicious. Lover. Yes. It's really awesome. So I thought I would try to modify that for the crock pot. Cool. Right. So there are a few things that are different about crock pot cooking than regular cooking, and that is one, the temperature at which it cooks at, and how close some of the ingredients are to the heating implement. Okay. So you want to be a little strategic as far as what you put first. Oh. So. So we're gonna use your smaller crock pot. Yep, we're using the small. If okay. you have, you could make this recipe a smaller, like break it down a little yeah. bit. This makes a lot. But if you had one of those cute little dip crock pots. I love those. This is perfect That's for that. That's gonna be my next crock pot investment when I get yeah. up to three. Woo, I totally wish that I had one when I was working on this. <laughs> so you've got just uh, canned yep. artichoke hearts. Canned artichoke hearts. Okay. Now on their own, they're a little bit bland. So we want to start the marinating process. Red pepper flakes. So we put the red pepper flakes, salt and pepper over that. Good. And then if you would like to zest the garlic clove, you're you want to give it a whirl? Watch your this. fingers. Yeah, watch your yeah. paws. See, I've had a real problem here. Do it directly over like that. See, look, you can even go. Like this? Flip it with the. Oh, no. Here. There, <laughs> there you go. Let's try to do this. You got like it. Like if you go like this. Hands. Yeah, if you go there like you this. Go. And now give it now, a good whack. Oh, shoot. Oh, Elizabeth, come on. <laughs> shoot. You can't be making okay, these keep Stevie Boy mistakes. You keep great. All right, grating. You guys talk much. You got it. Right on it's there. Cool. It's so nice. So the whole point of grating the garlic is it oh, gets yeah. super fine. It incorporates into the artichokes. <laughs> and then you Just got a it. whole clove in there for good luck. Yep, that's right. Okay. <laughs> it's like a New Year's Day Whoever surprise. Whoever gets that bite is like, say, <gasps> it's good for your heart. Totally. So you do two or three of those. Then you do the same with your lemons. Okay. And then you would finish it off with a squeeze of half a lemon. Okay. And a trick to getting the extra garlic out of here is Bang. just give whack. it a good whack just, like okay. that. Yep. That. Don't be too ginger. Then you would do the red bell peppers. Okay. If you want to just toss those all I'll over. I'll just put some yeah, of this absolutely. in here. Why not? And you got you know, that. Might as well Zesting. do it. Perfect. Okay, and else? the zest gives it a really, really um, zippy flavor. Yes. Yeah. Do the shredded Parmesan so, next. Oh, there we go. Now, we do that next simply oh because gosh. it's one of the Whoa. harder cheeses, so it's going to take a little bit longer to really heat up and melt. Sure. Okay. And after that, we are going to take the feta. And Elizabeth, if you want to just kind of cube that up okay. into about quarter inch cubes. Sure. We would use the whole thing. Good. And you put that on top of the Parmesan. And then you're going to finish it with mayonnaise and mascarpone cheese and heavy cream. This now, is great. This yeah. is a little bit different, too. A lot of times when people think about crock pot, they think, you know, as long as I just get everything in there, all doing stuff together. But order is very important for there this. There is some importance to the order. Sure. As I was working on this to modify it, there's a lot of good reading online to figure out what should you put in first, when do you open it and give it a stir before you're ready to serve, yeah. and that sort of thing. Especially with dairy, because dairy will separate sure. in the cooking process. Yeah. So if it's too hot, it's going to start spreading apart too soon. So how long do you let this sit in there then? You let this sit for an hour and a half, then you uncover it, give it another stir so everything on the bottom mixes with the cheeses that are melting on top. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And then just give it another half hour, adjust the crock pot to warm, and you're ready to serve. All right. So I'm getting super easy. Here, I'm going to try this. All right. And then you got to make these uh, beef sandwiches, huh? All right. So the beef okay, sandwiches, okay. I am super excited about. They are based off of a Greek stew recipe which incorporates tomatoes. What do you think? Oh. Is it yummy? 
Oh, I mean, wow. I know. <laughs> you know what? It's a treat, right? That's the kind that you could start at the beginning of the day on Sunday, and you're like, you know, what? I'm just gonna do a little bit. Totally. And then Sunday <laughs> night, you're passed out on a sofa, and that's empty. And you've ate the whole cracker. Uh -huh. And you have some on your shirt. But if you have virtuous crackers, like bean crackers yes, and sweet potato crackers, it doesn't really matter. You know, a nice little bit of count. heat, though, and I love the citrus <clears throat> from the lemon. That's good because that sometimes can be an overly rich thing. Yeah. And it's so good. That is what makes it too heavy yeah. sometimes. So this gives it a little brightness. Um, the bean. If we're gonna be preparing kind of like a stew. Yeah. So you would brown the meat, which we've done over here. Okay. I had a chuck roast, which has some beautiful marbling in it. You can see the fat sort of strips going through. And you mm -hmm. simply sear it on both sides so it's nice and dark. And then you would add that to the crock pot. Good. Mm -hmm. And in the same pan, you would take onions, saute those a little bit because you are building flavor. Yeah. Sure. Part of yeah. the reason that I resisted the crock pot was because everyone makes it seem like easy peasy and you just dump everything in, but there is some effort that goes into it to give sure. rich flavor to the food. Yeah, a little bit of browning goes a long way. Exactly. Huh? So you would do onions and then some warming spices. So if you'd like to shift over here, oh, yes. I'll show you a really cool trick to make what is called officially a bouquet garni, which is a fancy word for a spice packet. Okay. And these are cheesecloths. Yes. And you would open them up. I've got them kind of bundled here. Okay. Like this. Okay. And if you don't have cheesecloth, you can use a coffee filter cool. as well. Basically, you're just trying to infuse flavor into your braise. But then you don't have to worry about picking all this stuff out. Exactly. That's the whole reason. You can put the stuff right on in and fish it out later, but sometimes you're surprised by that bay leaf in your soup or that um, cinnamon stick when you're not expecting it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you would layer then a few cinnamon sticks. Bay leaf. Bay leaf, allspice yeah. cloves, and there's wine in the braise, and it gives it a really like warm, rich holiday feeling this almost. Is good. Yeah. Steve, what do you think? Tie it up. If you don't have twine, you can tie it in a knot. Is that so good? Oh, wow. Aww. What do you think? Mm. And it's I bet pretty it smells different. amazing. This, yeah, right? That's huh? what makes it so different. Oh, this that, is is, good. that is very different. And you know what's funny? It tastes like fall. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Yes. Those spices of the season are very well represented well, this in this. Smells amazing. Great. Take, perfect thank you so much. Yeah, All right, welcome. I'm going to get into thank this you. in a second. So delicious for these recipes. Go to TwinCitiesLive.com. You can click on food. We've got all the details right there. Hey, don't forget if you're headed to TCF Bank Stadium for a Gophers game or a Vikings game, make sure you stop by Cafe 421 because you can grab a bite to eat. I would highly recommend that. Oh, Come